In today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these simple letter logos using Adobe Illustrator. And in this tutorial, the example letter I'll be using is the letter P. But once you see how this can be done, um, it should be pretty easy to apply the same techniques to the rest of the alphabet. So I'll go ahead and get started here in Illustrator. The first thing we want to do is set up a new document that's sized to 1280 by 1280 pixels. And we're going to set up our documents that we're all working with a similar view and with similar settings. So what I'm going to do is come up here to where it says view and I want to turn off snap to pixel. In fact, from the view, uh, the view menu, the only thing we want selected is snap to point. And then we'll go to window and what we want selected up here is control, align, color, and gradient. And then we can close out of that. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over here to the align panel and I'm going to make sure the align to, I'm going to make sure that's set to align to artboard. And once that's set, I'm going to come over to the rectangle tool up here. If you click and hold over that button, you'll get this little flyout menu. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to hold shift and alt on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And up here from this drop down, I'm going to choose this red slash to get rid of the black outline. And then for the fill color, I'll just choose black over here. And I'm going to take the opacity of that and bring that about in half. And then I'll click out of that to deselect it. And right here where it says width, uh, ellipse width, we want to make sure we have this turned on, this chain link. We want that constrained width and height proportions. We want that turned on. And I'm going to change the width to 300 pixels. So I'll hit 300 and hit enter. And then I'm going to center this up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. Now I'm going to grab the select tool and I'm going to hold alt and click and drag this circle to create another copy. And I'll make the width of this 150. Oops, 150, and then center that up on the uh, horizontal and vertical axis as well. And I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag that to create another copy. And I'll center that up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then I'm going to hold, I'm going to click and drag this top node right here, this top anchor point. I'm going to click and drag that up and then hold Shift until it snaps to the top of the circle like that. And then we can let go. And once we've done that, I'm going to click and drag over everything right here, all three of those circles. And I'm going to hold Alt. Actually, no, I'm going to click on the, uh, the Shape Builder tool, which is over here. And then I'll hold Alt and click on the center circle to delete that. And then we'll go back to the Select tool. And then we are left with something like this. So this is going to be the round part of the letter P. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the, uh, the tail end over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold on the Ellipse tool until we get the Flyout menu. And then we can choose the Rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle like that. I'm going to bring the opacity of that down in half. And I'm going to make the width of this 150. And over here on the inside of this rectangle, you'll see these little round anchor points. I'm just going to click and drag that in until it turns, until those edges turn red like that. And then it's going to become rounded. Then I'll grab the select tool. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard, grab this node right here, and then just snap it to the left side of this inner circle right there, just like that. And now I'll click off of the graphic to deselect everything. I want to grab the pen tool now, which is over here, and snap to the top of the shape, click, then hold shift and bring that line straight through all the way to the outside of the bottom of that shape, and then go ahead and click again. And now we can let go of shift and just finish this shape up going around the outside and back to the starting point. I'm going to grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the original rectangle so we have them both selected. And I'm going to come over here to the Pathfinder tab. If you don't have the Pathfinder tab, just go to Window, Pathfinder, and then that should pop up. And I'm going to choose uh, Minus Front. So it's going to get rid of that right there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the uh, Direct Selection tool. And I'm just going to click and drag over these two bottom nodes right here and just click and drag them up. And I'm going to hold shift to lock it onto the, uh, the vertical axis. So I'm going to bring this up to about here so that that tail isn't too long. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the select tool, click and drag over everything. And I'm going to want to zoom in on this so I can get a better view of what I'm doing. So to zoom in, I'm going to hold alt and roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times. And I'm going to come back over to the shape builder tool. And I'm going to hold Alt and click on this little piece right here that's sticking out from the circle, so that's gone. And then I'm just going to click and drag over this area, these areas right here, so it combines them all to one shape. And I'm going to do the same thing with this area and this area. Combine that all into one shape. 
And then I'll just turn that green. Actually, you know what? I'll have to go back to the select tool and I'll turn that green. Or you know what? Let me undo that. You could hit Control Z to undo it. I'll click off of it to deselect everything and then click on just this shape and turn that green. So you can see the difference between the two. We have two different shapes here. So the next thing I want to do is just zoom out a little bit. I want to click and drag over both of these and bring the opacity of them all the way up. And I'm going to color them in now with the gradient. So let me click off of it to deselect everything. I'll click on just the black shape right here. And under the gradient tab, I'm going to, from the, the type drop down, I'm going to choose linear. And if you notice, it gives it a white to black gradient. We over, over here, we have the white stop and then we have the black stop over here. So I'm going to double click on the black one. And then from this drop down, I'm going to choose HSB and I'm just going to choose a shade of pink. Something like that, like a deep shade of pink, almost like a red. And we can click out of that. I'm going to double click this stop right here, this slider. Again, choose HSB from this drop down and I'm going to make this one like a yellowish orange sort of shade. Maybe something like. Um, go with that right there and again click out of that to uh to release it and now i'm going to click on the green shape and i'm going to give that the same gradient so I'll come over here to the gradient the uh the drop down choose linear and it's going to give it the same gradient only we want to flip this around so that the pink is on this side and the yellow is on this side so to do that i'm going to come over here to the gradient tool and i'm going to bring the cursor just to the outside of the right of this strip right here and it's going to turn into a rotate icon and once it does that you could just rotate it around 180 degrees and then hold shift on the keyboard so it locks it exactly onto 180 degrees and then you can let go. And there you have that right there. So we're just about done with this design. The only last thing to do would be, let me grab the select tool. The last thing to do would be to put a little bit of a shadow right here. So it looks like it's casting a little bit of a drop shadow over this. To do that, uh, let me click and hold on the rectangle so I can grab the uh, ellipse tool again. And I'm going to create another ellipse. I'm going to hold shift and alt and click and drag to create a perfectly round ellipse. Let me just make this blue so we can see, we can differentiate it up against the rest of this graphic. And I'll make the width of this 150. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this down in half. And I'm going to go back to the Align tab and center it up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that. And let me grab the Select tool. I'm going to take this top node again, hold Shift, and then just snap it to the top right there. And I'm going to create another copy of this, so I'm going to hold Alt and click to create another copy. I'll make this one green, and then I'll hold control, grab this node right here, and snap it over to this node right there so it's lined up like that. And then I'll just click and drag this bottom right node down. I'll hold shift and just click and drag it down a little bit, maybe about that much. And then hold shift and click on the blue shape so we have them both selected. And now I will go to the Pathfinder tool and choose minus front just like that. Then hold shift, click on this shape right here and go back to the shape builder tool, hold alt and click on this interior area right here. And now we can go back to the select tool, click off of it to deselect everything and take just this blue piece that's left over and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then I'll just take this blue shape right here. I'll make that black and I'll adjust the opacity of it until it looks about right. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating these simple letter logos using Adobe Illustrator. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for